So again, we restart from the beginning again about how to construct a fine term structure model. So I imported the numpy and imported matplot library, okay. And the tabulate and style use seven white grid. And n is the data point per yield curve. So I assume I can observe 10 cross-sectional spot rate. Okay. And the T is the time as a universe of the uh, delta. So we have a 10 segment, I generate 10 segment and the delta one of 12. So I can observe, for example, like one year, so it is like one month, so 10, 12. Yes, so like a, like a 10 month yield curve. And then I generate, I simulate a zero coupon bond yield curve by cumulative sum of some random number generated from uniform distribution. And then to make it small, I divide by 1000. Okay, and then zero coupon bond price is then NPEXP exponential of yield curve and I put red T and then I have a delta because delta is a time step. So if I print out, I have looks like this. And then, uh, not iterable. Okay, well, I don't know why it doesn't work, but anyway, this is not important. So let's say list. Huh. Okay, and this doesn't work. Um, anyway, uh, let's skip. And then let me simply print out zero coupon mode prices, JCB, CCB. So we simulated zero coupon mode price like this. So print out, okay? Yes. So yeah, this is zero coupon mode price. Then the question is, using zero zero coupon mode price, I want to simulate, I want to compute the forward price. Okay, so forward price. For the price is of course okay. for the price is basically uh, for the price is a ratio. Okay, so for the price is is basically ratio between zero coupon mode prices. So. Basically, we have TCB, TCB. We have to divide the T divided the GCB, some T minus here, T minus one, something like that. Okay, so here it is from, let's start from zero to, okay, minus one. Okay. And then here we can the very first, very first forward rate, very first forward price is the same to zero coupon board price, right? Uh, as we know. So MP, so basically the very first one is JCB zero. And then from second one, on to the rest one. And then I can open this one. And then MP open to zero. JCB zero one one minus. And then I need a parenthesis over here. Invalid syntax.
actually. <laughs> Sorry, I'm stupid. So stupid. So first one and then first one is empty this one and then from second one is ratio between this one and this one. So yeah, I think this should work. Okay. Now it is looks okay. So let me try tabulate again. Print tabulate. Jeep, and then uh, uh, to see together. Uh, actually, uh, I have to jeep first. Let me jeep to compare zero coupon bond price and forward price. Okay. And then I think a list. Ah, this is not pretty at all. Tabulate. Okay, now it is fine. So the first one is now zero coupon mode price, second is for the price. So as we expected, the first one is same. And second zero coupon price is based the ratio between this one and this one. Okay. So this is a bit hard question, but this is the right answer. Okay. And then since we have uh, four the prices, now we can compute four the rate, right? And then four the rate is to use this formula. Here, what we computed just before is actually uh, this part. We computed this part. Okay, log g t big t minus log g t big t. So the ratio before log, of course. And we have to take a log and divide it by tau. In our example, uh, it is the delta, right? So the forward rate. For the rate is we the log and then for the price and divided by delta. Okay, then we have for the rate. And then let me see for the rate here. Yes, we have for the rate over here. And in comparison, let's see J zero coupon bond yield curve. All right, so yeah, the first one is exactly the same. And then this one, as we run this one, uh, this two months zero, two months pot rate average of this one and this one. And this one is basically average of this one and this one, this one something like that. We all run this one, okay. And then next to uh, simulate the change of the forward rate, to simulate the change of the forward rate, forward rate, let me define dt. dt is here, let me say it is the, uh, again, one month. So this is the change of time. Change of time. And then in order to model this part, change of the forward rate, change of forward rate, we have to have a next period of these values. So what I can do is I can, now I can hide this one. Then copy entire this one, and then next period, put one for next period, and this one is next period. But instead of t, we have a t plus dt over here because it's next price, and then we have next one over here and gcb. Um, 
So next period, zero four point five eight. And forward rate, you can see the forward rate like this. And then change of the forward rate, D forward rate over here, this one, D forward rate, change of forward rate is of course forward rate one minus forward rate today. Okay. And then let, let me move this one. Okay. For here, and then let's see only forward rate. Forward rate next month and forward rate today and then change your forward rate. Let me check it. Hmm. Uh, um, forward rate one. I don't, um, it shouldn't be zero. <laughs> Why do I have the same number, forward rate one, forward rate? Ah, sorry, this is the portfolio on the bar one, right? Okay, so this is forward rate next month. So this is, well, we can express yield curve in terms of that one is part rate, but also forward rate. So this is the yield curve expressed in terms of forward rate next month, next month forward rate. And this is the, this month, this, this month yield curve expressed in terms of forward rate. So this is change, change of forward rate at each data point. And we have assume I have 10 data point and it's 10, okay? Okay, so I think to check the numbers, let me, uh, check the graph. So first, PLT plot. Okay, so let me hide this one. Print and PLT plot. First, uh, T is the x axis, x axis, and first let's see GCB yield curve, and then I want to see red dotted line, and then marker is O. Okay, so this is, yeah, this is a zero coupon, yield of zero coupon bond. So it is basically spot right? And then we can express yield curve, of course, in terms of forward right? So, we can express forward right? And then now blue, and then now we have a square, right? So red one is yield curve in terms of spot rate. Blue one is the forward rate. Uh, blue one is the yield curve in terms of the forward rate. And then change of the forward rate, let's say, change of forward rate is, let's see, it is a yellow, yellow and then diamond. So yellow is the change of forward rate, and yellow is too weak, let me change it to green. Okay, change of the forward rate. Okay, so let me run entire program again. Okay? okay, so we have this structure. Well, this is very small, but I think it is fine. Zero minus one. I think everything is, let me see the print this data as well. I think everything's fine. Zero, zero. Great. Good, good. Now, next. Okay. Um,
price in corner. In finance, we have a very important concept called the price in corner. So definition of a price in corner, which is a very important concept in finance. And definition of price in corner is, it is similar to NPV, but so in price in corner, PT. PT is on asset price, price of the asset at time T. Price on asset at time T is the, basically, it is at time T. So we take the expectation with respect to information at time T. And then, Of course, this does not hold. Uh, this is obviously wrong because where t plus dt is price at dt times later. Okay? And where today's asset price is not simply expectation of the future price because first we need the time discounting, right? We need time discounting and then we have to adjust the risk. So by price in corner, we mean and so the price and color is a very important concept in finance. So price and color, this MT plus DT is called price and color. So by multiplying price and color with the future payoff and then taking the expectation of it and then we can get the asset price. That is the definition of price in color, very important concept in finance. So price in color is M. Yeah, price in color is called price in color. So actually in finance, in asset pricing, entire goal of asset pricing is about how to specify uh, this pricing column. Okay, this is the most important part. So, if we can somehow model pricing column and then multiply future payoff and expectation of it, then we can calculate every asset price, fair price of every asset. Okay, and then we will learn a fine term structure model. In a fine term structure model, we have a very uh, special structure special structure. So here, let's model a fine term structure as first. Let's construct pricing color. So first k equal three. K is the number of state variables. State variables that affects asset pricing. So like macroeconomy, macro finance, macro variables. Okay. So some like economy wide variable, whether it is like a boom or whether it is like a recession. Okay. Or like interest rate economic interest, something like that. Okay. And then next, rest RF as the risk for the day. Risk for the day. So it is potentially time bearing. But here, uh, for, for the purpose of this class, I just fixed it as a constant. And then nu is the random standard normal k. So here we assume state variable, so it's a realized 
realized state variable realized state variable okay and then here uh, new zero is the then k is parameter assumption and then new one thing this is another parameter assumption okay and then okay basically what we want to do is lambda lambda Zero is nu zero plus nu. Okay, so here in the applying term structure model, uh, what I'm trying to do is in the in an affine term structure model, actually for uh, I assume. I assume here Oops. M T plus T is exponential of minus exponential of minus R F. Okay. Minus R F. And then, actually, Rf, oh, what is this? OK. Rf is risk-free rate. I, let me simply write an Rt, OK? Rt. And then we have, actually, what exponential term? OK, this looks better. And then we model this as a lambda, lambda t prime lambda divided by 2 dt. Okay. So this is one example of a fine term structure model. Here I need a to distinguish you. Okay. This one. And then we have a stochastic term. Plus actually minus lambda t prime d c and then no, t okay so it is one assumption or assumption about the uh, pricing color so i want to model pricing color this way actually i miss t over here and then about this particular lambda t, lambda t, I assume, okay, I define this one as Lambda zero plus lambda one t something like that. Uh. Okay, 
So we mother uh, this way. So in the end, our goal is to estimate this lambda zero and lambda one. This is our final goal. Right, then, well, this is a slight, this is new zero, well, um, okay, so let me change this notation over here. New one, okay, now this looks better. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. So, actually, our goal over here, our goal is to estimate new zero and new one from the data. So as if we can estimate new zero and new one over here, then new t is basically macroeconomic variable, state variable, new t over here. It is state variable, so it is like input. Maybe it is big data. And then this delta is something we determine. This determine lambda t. Once we have lambda t over here, and this is some random number. So it is again from data. So here we assume such that this one TZ. T, okay. So this is basically this is data, and it is something normalized data. So it is like big sigma t So we multiply squared variance, covariance matrix of the, this uh, new T process. So this new is the data. So it is a change of new. So again, therefore it is data, but we normalize this one with the variance covariance matrix. Therefore, this is, this is distributed as, and then basically like this one. Hmm? I have it. Well, about why we have this one, I have uh, other YouTube or uh, fixed income contract that details explain what does these notations mean? What do these notations mean? It is a standard Brownian motion. So basically from the data, of uh, like big data or other macro financial data, we normalize it and then we transform this one as to uh, standard Brownian motion. Okay, for detailed information, you can check our or you too. Okay, so, so of course, this the pricing color, the most important part, the pricing color doesn't always look like this, okay? But for this particular model, I assume pricing model follows this process. Pricing model follows this process. Then, using ethos lemma, Ito's lemma again about Ito's lemma. I explained it at the YouTube. Using Ito's lemma, you can 
easily. Okay. There. can easily uh, ah. here I miss the T over here using Ito's lemma you can easily check that is equal to E M T plus the T the one so if you use e to lemma and instead of p instead of p t plus one over here here p t plus one instead of this one uh, you can put one okay that's constant one over here then this one because E minus R T T. Basically, this count factor. This makes sense, right? So, price of the one dollar, price of the one dollar at D T times later, is discounted value of that one dollar over the D T period. And then by definition, R T is the discount rate, risk free over this period. So, this one should follow basically from, this should hold from the definition of pricing color. And if we assume pricing color this way, then you can show that this hold by using e to lemma. So this one is the process of ordering this part. So k equals three, k is the state number. So if here, dimension of the new. Okay, so, yeah, so new T here to make the code and notation constantly, uh, consistent to each other. New T, this one is K dimensional vector of macro image uh, state variable eg macro financial variable okay okay so k the three in the rf is risk free right here is rt and do is the this is realized state variable over here do t right so do t right Not in our model. And then new zero is of course this part. So new zero is some parameter assumption. Okay. Here, just to run the model, I assume we know new one and new zero and new one, but that's the parameter something we have to estimate from the data. And new one is our parameter assumption, okay, which to be estimated. In the end, this is same. Okay, and then lambda zero is basically this part, and then therefore lambda t is lambda t. Lambda is then basically here at lambda zero we can simply multiply delta. Okay, then we have sent to this part. Zero multiplied by delta. Okay. okay. And then 
we have to model this DG part, the DG part. Then DG nu part is, well, let me also. K, and then we have to scale it up by square root of the uh, TT, so MPSQRT DT, okay. Uh, Runtime warning invalid. I don't know what it means, but Ah, TT, okay. Dot five, okay. Now <laughs> this looks better. No error. And then price the log pricing color, log M. So this is log pricing color. Log pricing color is then I can just write RF multiplied by DT log pricing color, I can simply write down this equation over here. And then lambda. And then, well, it is basically matrix algebra. So, factor sum, sum product lambda, and divided by two. And then divide, multiply dt. Ah, copy. So divided by two and multiply dt. And then third term, third term this part minus lambda multiplied by dz nu. Okay. But then it is another matrix algebra. So it is non multiplication. So to do matrix algebra, I can use this D S notation. So this is log pricing corner. So pricing corner M is then we have exponential exponential of log pricing corner. Okay. Oh I have to say NP. And then let's check print. Pricing color simulated color, and then I want to look at M. Yes, so simulated pricing color is 1.03 uh, something. <laughs> okay. So I just specified a particular affine term structure model. So here it is called a fine term structure model, a fine mid linear. So here it is called a fine term structure model because, because the price of the risk. So this is the stochastic term, right? This is source of the risk. This is the source of risk, right? This is the source of risk. Actually, I can write down. Instead of this, one, I can write down. So this one, is the source of risk, right? This is the only stochastic term. This is the only stochastic term in the pricing color. So this is source of risk, therefore, Therefore, the lambda is something we multiply to the risk. So it is the called the price of risk. This is called the price of the risk. And then Our model is called affine, 
of five because the price of risk, which is lambda, which can be time varying, is a linear function of risk, basically, which is make a new. So of five minutes, like a linear function, right? So this is the lambda t. Is the, so in the pricing color, in the pricing color here, if you look at it carefully, this is the only source of risk. Okay, this is the, because it is stochastic. And then we multiply lambda, so it is basically source of risk. And this is source of risk. And so this is the price of risk. So this is the source. Source and this is the price of risk, right? This is price, and this price of risk is the linear function of this term. This is this is change of the yeah, source of risk, so this risk source macro financial. Risk. So this is a linear function, and this linear function is called a phi, a phi model. That's why we call this entire structure model as a fine term structure model. Okay. Now, since we specified this fine term structure model, our next step is very straightforward. Okay. Our next step is to estimate this and this. Okay. If we estimate this new, this one and this one, okay. If we can estimate this one and this one, then this is the data. So when we have a new microfinance variables, or well, actually I'm making model this one as a big data. So if we have a big data, given this data, we, I can compute, I can compute the price of risk, and I can sub, I can put this price of risk over here. I can specify pricing color. Once I, uh, once I specify a pricing color like this, then if we have some like a contract that is dependent on insurance rate, such as bond, then we can calculate fair price of this payoff, okay, future payoff. So this is the goal of our model. And then I will illustrate the process next period. Uh, <laughs> no, no. I'll illustrate this process in the next class. So I think this is enough for today. Do you have any questions for today's topic?